Thank you for having me here. It's a real pleasure to be able to share more about the Connecting Small Histories project and to be part of this learning day. Um, and I just said as well before, thank you to Mike for, for the hard work in making the blended event um, a success, even with a couple of teething problems. I really appreciate it. OK, so in Chris Whitty style, next slide, please. Marvellous, thank you. So the Connecting Small Histories project is a collaboration between the Jewish Small Communities Network, JSCN, and Swansea University. It's funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. It originated from the notion that small communities have a shared and distinctive heritage, which is intimately tied to their size. This relates, of course, to Jewish and non-Jewish communities, but for the members of JSCN in particular, with that small size often comes a vulnerability. So a synagogue's close or a repurposed, a community can often lose a potential focus for stories and activities, and this underpinned the idea for the project. It's also too often true that specifically Jewish voices are often omitted from presentations of local history and heritage, despite there being a Jewish presence in Britain that dates back to resettlement in the mid 17th century, and also a preceding medieval history from 1066 to 1290, which I have my own research interests in too. So if there are any questions on that, I'd happily answer those. So Connecting Small Histories was inspired to desire, the desire to map the extent of the footprint of these communities across Britain and the integration, whether past or present, with local culture and economy. The objective of this project was to document and celebrate the stories of Jewish life in places where the presence is either diminishing, small or already vanished and to use those stories to raise awareness among Jewish and non-Jewish locals of the rich heritage that's right there on their doorsteps. We believe that stories from these communities who are now either dispersed or small in number reveal the footprint of Jewish life in these areas of the UK and beyond, and are integral to wider stories of villages, towns and cities across Britain. So together with a group of highly committed volunteers, the team explored hidden pasts and surviving memories from six locations, which you can see up here on the slide. St Anne's and Eastbourne represented our coastal interests, Somerset and Cumbria were our rural focus, and Bradford and Sunderland, where Jewish communities had rapidly re reduced in size or recently dispersed. In fact, the case studies of Bradford also provided us with the opportunity to look at a different type of community, which was not in the original plan. And that was a digital community where stories and memories and photographs of people who are connected to this small community um, were showcased. But they are no longer live as part of a community that don't live in that, in that location. So they're shared and preserved instead online through social media, such as uh, Facebook. So next slide, please. The Connecting Small Histories project started back in April 2020 and it finished in August of this year. It was carried out against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic. The project, though, was successfully adapted to account for the restrictions, and so it was delivered almost exclusively online, with a small number of in-person interviews when it was safe to do so. Our volunteer group was crucial, like so many other projects, to delivering this important work, and their hard work and dedication was truly inspiring. In fact, one of our unplanned outcomes, as far as the lottery were concerned, was the fact that the project had created a community all in itself through regular Zoom meetings. It, our volunteers described themselves as a small family, supporting one another through hard times during the pandemic, providing a welcome distraction to one another, as well as something positive to focus on, particularly in the darker times. So through a combination of training sessions, meetings and in-depth research, a patchwork of local and individual testimonies were carefully stitched together. And these were published in our project book and online heritage hub, which I'll come back to in just a moment. Overall, the project linked these histories to one another, as well as pre-existing heritage projects and to larger narratives of Jewish history in Britain, covering, covering themes of life, creativity, diaspora and future heritage. These fascinating stories have been researched and shared with wider communities as part of a series of talks to external organisations 
and other Jewish organisations too. So back in March, we also hosted a 10-day history festival, which was recorded, and the videos are still available on the Heritage Hub. The festival was designed to share stories from our project with a wider audience, as well as to provide a platform for other projects, such as Lily's Legacy, who shared their stories with us through that event too. However, there were also outcomes from the festival that were somewhat unexpected, with connections happening in real time as the sessions progressed. And one, project, one of these examples was when we shined a spotlight on the project British Jews in the First World War, also known as We Were There Too. Senior consultant Alan Fell presented a paper about their fascinating project and its highlights, including digital archive and interactive website, which will become a permanent record of the lives of Jewish men, women and families from 1914 to 1919. I'll share their website in the chat with you in just a moment. So part of Alan's talk featured a spotlight on the personal records that are on the site. And he told us and the audience about Herman Bergson Brown, born in 1885, a member of the Bradford Jewish Social Club. Herman served with the Canadian Expeditionary Forces and in 1914 was given a week's leave to marry his fiancée, Margaret Topaz, at Spring Garden Synagogue, Bradford, while suffering from gas poisoning and a wound to the right leg. Herman was sent straight back to the front just the day after. Although Herman was the focus of Alan's story and presentation here, our project team was intrigued by Margaret Topaz because her name was the same as one of our volunteers, Jeremy Topaz. Could this have been a connection, we wondered? Was she a relation? So we contacted Jeremy and he replied, oh yes, Margaret or Auntie Maggie, as I know her. She was one of my father's siblings, seven sisters and one brother. She had three children, of whom the last one, Esther, died earlier in the month, aged 96. Two of Esther's children, he said, by the way, were reform rabbis. Next slide, please. But the, connect the connections in real time didn't stop there. Jeremy went on to say that one of Esther's children is Rabbi Walter Rothschild, who was also another active participant in the History Festival audience. And to top it all off, when I was presenting our project research on the Jewish history of Bradford and their Facebook group, I used this photograph you can see here, showing the cleaning of Boland Street Synagogue. Isn't it incredible just to see how, as the soot was cleaned away, the beautiful stonework was exposed. But the significance of this photograph was that the three children stood just there behind the car were none other than Walter and his, three, his two siblings who were attending the festival session. So we were able to write up these connections on our Heritage Hub journal and some additional pieces of the puzzle were later provided by Walter and his sister. His grandmother, Margaret, whom you'll remember was mentioned just earlier in the We Were There Two project. She died in Bradford in 1959 and Herman, her husband, who worked as a tailor, survived her by nearly two decades. Next slide, please. Another fascinating story is that of Jonathan and Pauline. Pauline was born in 1930. Her parents, Harry and Jeanette, and brother Arnold were evacuated to St Anne's from Leeds in 1939. Pauline attended Queen Mary School, where there were other Jewish girls. Her father, Harry, was a special constable during the war years. Her mother, Jeanette, was a volunteer for the St John Ambulance. Pauline remembers being able to see the flashes across the sea where bombs were dropping on Liverpool. And she also recalls the USA air base at Wharton. Her parents often gave hospitality to the airmen, she said. Pauline and family moved to Blackpool in around 1948. Jonathan's story began in 1936 when he, his parents, Dorothy and Cyril, and baby brother Brian arrived in St Anne's from Manchester in 1940. They lived in a large house called Sandhills on Clifton Drive. They spent a great deal of time riding their bikes and watching the German planes bombing Liverpool and Preston docks. Cyril Lever was a cinema owner who travelled into Manchester daily with other businessmen on what became known as the club train. Jonathan recalls that his parents also invited several Jewish American servicemen to their home for meals and they traveled to the house in a big jeep. By the time the war was over and his parents and brother returned to Manchester there was no room for him to board at Lawrence House at first so for a few months he was a day boy 
He remembers that his parents arranged for him to live with a family called Green. He recalls that they were kind and he was happy there, but he couldn't remember their names. So it wasn't long before our project volunteer Hilary Thomas made the connection. She writes that after speaking with Jonathan, she did some research of her own and realised that Pauline's family was the one who'd gave Jonathan the home in 1946. So she spoke with Pauline again in November and asked if she remembered Jonathan. She did, of course. So she put them in touch. And after 74 years, the two of them made contact again. Amazingly, they lived just six miles apart. The full story was featured in the Jewish Telegraph um, newspaper in November 2020. So as I mentioned earlier, these stories are now published in the Connecting Small Histories project book. And this takes the first steps of drawing the footprint of Jewish life from what are now small or former communities across the United Kingdom. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, the other direction. <laughs> there we go, thank you. So as you can see here, this is the project book. We have the front cover on the left and a brief snapshot of the section on the diaspora evacuees in St Anne's by Hilary Thomas. The project, thanks to the National Lottery Heritage Fund, is available to download for free from our hub. This link here gives you an online version where you can flip through the pages as you would a normal book. It's not quite as satisfying as having the real thing in your hands, but you can also download it from the bookshelf, which is on the hub as well. And again, I'll provide those links. I believe they might already be in the chat, but if not, I can pop those um, on there later. So the next slide, please. So this is Heritage Detectives, our school resource. And this is narrated by our two characters that you can see here, Sam and Sarah. It's been curated to encourage key stage two pupils to link broader themes of general heritage and diversity to their own locations and experiences. It's been professionally designed and includes short case studies and snippets, which has been inspired by the volunteers and their stories um, throughout the Connecting Small Histories project. We were um, lucky enough to have a fantastic review from retired teacher and Girl Guides leader Sally Strauss, who says this excellent workbook uses examples of Jewish heritage to encourage pupils to explore their own heritage. It inspires them not only to look around their local area, but to think about the importance of community and learn more about their own family background. <laughs> Here you can see our front cover and a snapshot of the pages on diversity. These pages include an idea for a class art project, which is supported by additional resources on the JSCN hub. On there, we've created a tailor-made page for heritage detectives. And this also includes a downloadable art project template, as well as helpful videos. If you have a look just at the bottom where it says page 22 there, there's a pink triangle. And these are um, present throughout the booklet and link directly to uh, a video which is on the website. We were able to send out 260 copies of Heritage Detectives to schools, as well as 100 project books to our network of contacts, including local MPs and SACRO groups. And we've had some really excellent feedback. If you could have the next slide as well, please. So the legacy of the project lives on through the Heritage Hub, as I've mentioned throughout my paper. This includes short articles and interactive Google Maps as well, and hopefully will be continued to be added to throughout the project, uh, throughout, um, well, even though rather that the Connecting Small Project Histories project has ended. Um, other bids are in the pipeline, as they always are, and JSCN continues to work hard as advocate and representative for over 100 small communities across Britain. So I hope you enjoyed this brief talk and I believe we're now going to head over to some questions and discussions and we're lucky enough to have Ed, Director of JSCN, with us as well. Um, so we'll do our best to, to answer fully whatever it is that you might like to talk about. Back to you. Cool. Thank you, Tony. That was really fascinating. Uh, such a great project and we've been so grateful that, you know, we've been, been able to work together. Um, there's um, Ed, um, who um, um, is uh, happy to join the conversation with you, Tony, is that correct? And Ed, can we bring Ed in? Hi, Sean. Hi, Ed. It's nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I'm just checking here if there's any questions in the chat. Um, any questions? 
Oh, and so someone in here in the room, um, Margaret, Professor Margaret Greenfields. Can we yeah. have Margaret in? Or Hi, uh, thanks so much. It's absolutely, I don't wish I should look here at the camera. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much. Really, really brilliant presentation. I've enjoyed it so much. Really excited. I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the Somerset communities that you connected with, because I used to live out there and I worked at University of Bath. And, I, you know, I just don't know much really about Jewish history in Somerset other than Bristol Synagogue. So we look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Okay, perhaps Ed could tell us a bit about the community that's there now and I could share a bit about the, some of the history we've covered. Yeah, indeed. So we, we have a lovely volunteer um, down in Taunton, Jane Warner, who has worked uh, tirelessly on the history of Maya Jacobs, the first mayor who was Jewish, but he's still the first mayor of Taunton. And... Um, he made a very significant and very prominently Jewish contribution to um, the community there. Yet his grave is is still unmarked. And, and Tony can tell us a little bit more about that, I guess. It, we're hoping to go forward in a new project. And as part of that project, we want to work uh, with the community in Cheltenham, but also the surrounding area. So Cheltenham will be the hub. And we're hoping that other stories from Stroud and perhaps from Bath um, come into that um, but th that's all in the in the lap of the gods at the moment um, so but we hope that's good that's going to go forward um, but the whole of the southwest not just Somerset is is dotted with um, both individual sort of family groups who uh, have either formed themselves around a bit of a hub say down in Truro with Kehillet Kernow you've got Exeter of course um, you used to have a community uh, around the Tall Bay area um, down there and uh, going off uh, into sort of uh, Herefordshire and Gloucestershire, you've got um, the uh, three counties liberal community. So there are people all around and many of them um, thought they were the only Jew in the village. And indeed, that was the start of Jane and um and someone else actually starting to form the jewish community and social group which is based uh, around her and um a couple of other leaders in taunton so jewish life goes on it's very rich i know she does Ju judaism talks with schools um which are based around exeter synagogue but she does them all over the place so there's lots going on and everybody is you know the only jew in the village until they discover one another and um, although they might be spread out, they really do come together and, and form a Jewish footprint, which is what we were trying to, you know, uh, establish and uh, make evident in our project. Tony, do you want to sort of take it from there? Yeah, of course. Thanks. So, um, as Ed said, we had some excellent research done in the area and the main part that came out of there was about Maya Jacobs. And there was a, uh, a bit of a running joke that there was a romantic relationship in, across the time and space of that. Um, there was a real connection there and it was it was fun, a bit of fun that was added into the project. But it is hoped that we can... Um, have a stamp on that and that Maya Jacobs may be commemorated at a later date. I know that Jane has been working tirelessly, um, in her own words would be, to harassing the, the local council to, to get something done, to have a, a plaque that's put in place there. And interestingly, as I, I talked about in the, the paper about these real-time connections that were happening across the project as well, we were presenting to the Jewish Genealogical Society and there was somebody in the audience there who actually had a whole um, load of extra information about Maya Jacobs because he was a, in fact a family member and so we were unable to make some um, connections during the research, there were gaps in the research um, as the project went on, but we were able to put this lady and Jane into contact with one another which was fantastic. Um, we were also able to share more of our research with um, the NHS chaplaincy in um, Somerset. And so we gave a, a background um, overview, quick whistle stop tour of Jewish history in the Southwest. Um, uh, that's, yeah, it is the Southwest, sorry, just starting myself there, um, which obviously includes uh, the synagogue in Exeter, which is the third oldest in England, I think, um, second only to the Ashkenazi synagogue, um, which is in Plymouth. Um, they were built, I think, 1762 and 1763, um, respectively. 
So there's, and these communities are still meeting, but um, in much smaller number. But, you know, the history is there and it's fascinating and there's always a story to be told. So. Um, yeah, I, I think to say that, what, you know, this was a 12 month project turned into 18 months because of COVID. But uh, originally it was intended as a as a pilot to to cover the, the idea of, of in investigating and revealing this footprint over the whole country. So JSCN um, is hosting all of this on the website. And I put in the chat and, and Tony has mentioned that we're still looking for contributions. We, we are putting together a volunteer board who are going to cr uh, curate um, those submissions, both for um, the Heritage Hub, I should say, pulls together um, all the Jewish heritage projects that we are aware of. And we know that there are a number that aren't digitized. So we're maybe we're not aware of them. So if you do know of projects which are not digitized, but you can point to the location of them and we can therefore act as a signpost to them, we would love to include them on the Heritage Hub. And, um, you know, this, this is, if people want to know of schools who can utilize the heritage detectives books, we would love to hear from them. Like Tony said, we've sent out to 260 schools who we are already connected with, um, but it can be used within Jewish schools as well. Um, and um, it can be used all across the curriculum. So Sandra teacher talks about that in the video on the website. It's about halfway through the video. It's an hour long video. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. You can, um, fast forward but um uh it, it it is a resource and if schools want to uh download a copy it's free for them to download if they want to purchase a hard a hard copy copy um they can do that or in fact in fact they can purchase uh copies for a whole class so 30 copies so if you know anybody in those areas or any sacres that you uh, uh are part of then please do put them in touch Wonderful. And as I see, you already have put uh, your email and how people can contact you in the chat. So if people just scroll a, a, a few chat uh, lines up, there you find um, the contact details of heritage at jscn.org UK. Um, thank you. Uh, so I'm just giving a last chance for anyone to ask a question to Tony and Ed um, or any other comments in connection with that before we move to our next presentation. I just minute. want to say, Sean, thank you so much for your support with our project. That was really been very invaluable. And thanks for inviting us and specifically Tony here today. It's, it's great. I'm so, I'm, so, I'm so happy that you were able to join us and, and talk about your wonderful project. And of course, the conference that uh, we had earlier this year, and we were um, so happy to be part of that. Um, that was a fantastic conference. We're also with Mike, who is in the room here, um, and streaming the master of streams today. <laughs> yeah. No, you're doing fine, Mike. You're doing fine. And I heard that was a wonderful presentation, which I unfortunately had to miss uh, with Sue, one of our core volunteers as well, who couldn't be with us today. Uh, yeah. So uh, thank you, Tony and Ed. I hope you'll join us for the rest of the day as much as you can. <laughs> wonderful to have you here. And yeah, um, feel free to get in touch with them uh, with the uh, details provided. And uh, we'll have just probably a minute to switch over tech. Uh, so if anybody uh, online or in the room wants to just, uh, you know, shake their shoulders, get some teas or coffees, water, uh, we'll be back uh, in a minute with, with Dawn Waterman. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>